and feels like they have to get it all done immediately at any hour of the day whenever anybody asks for anything. And it start, it like weighs on you. Personally, it weighs on you professionally. It's a hard thing to get out of, to break that, I have to respond immediately. I have to get back to them. Right, like I want to be able to respond right away. Yeah. And it gives me a sense of accomplishment, a sense of importance. You millennial. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm getting this done. I responded to Liz. Welcome everybody. Today we are talking about being too available, like people who are available all the time. Mm -hmm. So my name's Liz. My name is Tree. And welcome to another episode of Hey, Don't Do That, mm -hmm. where we explore the little things nobody told you that have yes. really big impacts on your motivation, effectiveness, and success. Yes. So speaking of um, being too available, uh -huh. that has a lot to do with how many hours are in the day, Tree. <laughs> so true or false, <laughs> there are 9,560 hours in one day. You mean I mean in, in a year. I mean in a year. In a year. 9,650 hours in a year. In a year. Yeah. False. You're correct. It is false. There are 8,760 oh. hours in a year. That's less. That's a lot of time to be available. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. And I was talking with someone on our team just this week and uh -huh. we have a lot going on right now. Yes. yes okay. We do. Yes, we we do. have a lot going on and this person is amazing. Like a player rock star gets it all done and feels like they have to get it all done immediately at any hour of the day, whenever anybody asks for anything and it start, it like weighs on you personally. It weighs on you professionally because you have no boundaries, like no sense yeah. of on and off. And so what I said was, hey, don't do that. Don't be available 24 seven. Even in a world where we are a 24 seven, 365 world. Yes. Don't be available 24 seven. Yeah. The good, the good thing is you as a, a, a manager, a boss saying, hey, I'm giving you permission yeah. to not have to answer me immediately when I text you or when I call you. Because in a lot of toxic cultures, people don't feel like they can do that. Mm -hmm. And they feel like the manager is going to, you know, like the manager got a tight grip on them. And if they don't respond right away, they're not showing that they're committed to the job. Or yeah. there's going to be some repercussion if they don't respond right away. So the good news is... We're fostering an environment where you can say, or you are free to not be available 24-7. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that, like, I say that, right? Don't be available 24-7. You don't need to. Shut up. Shut off. Turn your computer off. Go home. Come in later. But sometimes, like, we still, I think in today's society, we feel this internal pressure. Even if our boss or our leader is saying, you don't have to be available 24-7. There's this underlying thing in the culture that says, but you really do. And that's what's, I think, harder is the whole culture yes. of it. Yes. So it goes back to modeling the behavior yeah. of you as a leader, right? If you want your team, your people working for you not having boundaries, then you got to set boundaries first. Mm -hmm. right? But a lot of people... A lot of people in organizations, and Deloitte this, did this study, okay. 2015 study, where they survey a thousand U.S. professionals, and they found that one third of all employees feel that feel uncomfortable taking vacation time. A third? Yeah. I love vacation. <laughs> it's fun. Yes. I mean, you need a, everybody needs a break now and then, right? Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes I think if we were born a hundred years ago, 
with no phones. Yeah. Right? No internet. It was a whole lot easier. I shouldn't say it was a whole lot easier. They had life really hard back then. And when you left work, when you were Uh, done for the day, like you were done. Yeah. You went home. It, it, that was it. it. There wasn't anything else. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. But now, right, you have your laptop that you have. You have your phone with you yes. all the time. And so when you go home, you might be home, but you have a notification that pops up. Or someone calls your cell phone. Or they text you. Like, I think the environment that we live in has made it totally. harder to not be available 24-7. And COVID did not help. No. Because all of a sudden, you went from work at work to now work is at home. Like there's no separation. Yeah. Because so you're working at home, working in your home. So now yeah. your work is at home. And even though a lot of people have gone back, right? Like you might not still be working at home anymore. Mm-hmm. That mentality that we sat in for years, two years. Some of us are still there, right? Like in hybrid or still work from home. It's a hard thing to get out of. To break that, I have to respond immediately. I have to get back to them. There is, and I do this from time to time too, right? Like, I want to be able to respond right away. Yeah. And it gives me a sense of accomplishment, a sense of importance. You millennial. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting this done. I responded to Liz. Uh huh. You know, we're getting things done, and I feel accomplished. I feel important, right? But like when we do it all the time, yeah. When we're responding at like 10 a.m., 10 p.m. at night, and we do it day in day out, it's gonna lead to us feeling burnt out. Mm-hmm. Like, am I focusing on you know? Finishing this last paragraph of a book I'm writing. Am I eating dinner with my family? Is this the most important thing I could be doing right now? Rather than answering an email that my boss just sent five minutes ago. Because that's the time that's convenient for my boss, but might not be convenient for me. Mm -hmm. Right? There are situations where people have to be on call 24-7. Like if you think about like an ER doctor, right? Or if you're in law enforcement, you might have to be on call 24-7. But it's not a permanent thing. Yeah. Like maybe it's a day or two or a week, but it's not forever. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the idea, the fact that we are not setting boundaries and it's leading us to certain, to have like certain negative outcomes that we don't want. Well, it's been, it's mentally draining, right? So we work with a trainer, Jackie, who says, be where your feet are. Hmm. And if we're on 24-7, we can never truly be where our feet are. Because even when I'm with my kids, mentally, I'm like, do I need to respond to any emails? Have I gotten any emails? Let me check really quick. Oh, could I call this client? Is there something I can do? It's really hard to be where your feet are if you're on 24-7 and it's mentally draining. And that's where I think the burnout comes from. That's where I think a lot of the stress comes from. Because you're never fully present in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I That reminds me of a, a quote, and I, I don't remember the exact words. Okay. But Jim Quick says, we are burned out not because we're doing too much, but we're doing too little of the things that matter. Yeah. Right? Like when you're when you're available 24-7 at work, you're feeling like you're missing out at, at home. You're not being there for your kids. Mm. And it's you feel like it's draining you. It's draining your life. So you're burnt out because you're not doing a, a lot, but you're doing so little of the things that really matter and makes you come alive. Yeah. Okay, you want to know a strategy? Yes, To help yourself, course. like, not work. Yes, or be available 24-7. Yeah. Define done. Define done. So, have you ever heard of a ship called the Vasa? Mm-mm. So, it's a famous ship in Sweden. There's a museum. Vasa. Yeah, Vasa. Yeah. V-A-S-A. It was built in the 1600s. There's this, The king of Sweden, his name was King Gustav. 
So he builds this ship, and he decides it's going to be the best, like, baddest ship Mm -hmm. in the world. And he hires this guy who's going to build the ship for him. He tells him, I'm going to give you basically unlimited funds. I'm going to give you an entire forest. You can have all the trees, you know, whatever you want. So he starts working on the ship. And he wanted it, I think it was 108 feet in length. It was going to have 16 gun ports. And a couple months in, the king says, oh, um, actually, I want it to be 120 feet. And instead of 16 gun ports, I want 24. Well, he had already room cut yeah. the room for a loop. And the guy had already cut all of the the wood the to be woods. 108 feet. Okay. So the king says, I don't care. So he has to go back, redo it. Well, then the king gets word that there's a ship somewhere else that's going to have two decks of gun ports. So then he decides, no, this ship has to be the biggest and the baddest. So I want it to be 135 feet. I want it to have 72 gun ports on each side in two levels. The demands kept coming. The demands kept coming. It took years to build the ship. And finally, I think it's 1628, 24, 28. The, what the king did have time to plan and like fully plan was the party for this like ship's unveiling and first sale. So everybody's in the port watching it. The ship leaves the harbor. It goes about three quarters of a mile before when a big gust of wind comes (gasps) and it turns the ship. The ship leans and water immediately starts going into the gun ports and then it sinks within 50 minutes. Wow. It was the most expensive ship uh-huh. that had, like, ever been built. Ever built. And it yeah. never even sailed. Yeah. And he couldn't... And part of the reason was he couldn't say what is done. Mm, the, the shipbuilder or, like, the, the, the king who ordered the commands? Either. Those shipbuilders worked 24... I mean, they were constantly available. Constantly changing. Constantly doing things. And they never felt done. Mm. And so it's easy to be available 24-7 because you feel like you're never done. Well, there's more to do. There's more to do. Yeah. But if we can define what done is, yes. define that we're not saying is. that it never changes, right? But if we can define what done is, like, what does done look like for me today? Yes. Right? Done to me looks like today that I've, I have put in my notes for these three emails or that I've prepped for this training or mm. I have session, whatever prepped. And then at the end of the day, I'm done. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean, oh, I'll never change or never grow, you know, never build on to what I did, but we never define done. And so we just keep working and working and working and we never feel accomplished. Yeah. And then sometimes it doesn't work. And then we feel like that was a waste of the last however many years. When in reality, you did a lot, yeah. but you didn't know it because you didn't define You didn't define done. done. And then that, that reminds me of asking, also asking our um, people leading us, like, when is this due? Like, what is the deadline? Because not all these things are due at the same time. You so are good you, at asking that. Because you are. if you know when things are due, you can prioritize. Right? And that's, you're like, okay, so maybe this thing is not due for another two weeks. So I don't have to be available 24-7 to work on it. I can set some boundaries. Yeah. And you will ask, not just when, is, when do you need this? When, is this? when do you need this done? If I say next week, you're like, when next week? Beginning or end? <laughs> because we're the more so vague specific sometimes. you can be, yeah. The more specific you can be, the better the better it is for both parties. Sometimes you even have to ask if it's morning or afternoon or evening. And at the end of the day, it's better to say to just put it out there and say, "Hey, listen. Like, it's not that I'm, I don't want to be a team player. It's not that I don't want to accomplish our goals or to move things forward." And I'm struggling, feeling like I'm constantly on and I need to set some boundaries. Can you help? Yeah. Yeah. You also told me another way to communicate that I have a lot on my plate. Do you remember? No. Well, you told me um, of saying or asking, like, these are my priorities right now. Mm. And you just asked me to do these things, which of these items or tasks would you like me to take off? And then that puts the, the ball in your court. Now, you know, you're helping me decide, like, what should I work on? What my priorities are? And you're not saying, I'm not going to get things done. Right? I'm not going to work. But you're also saying, but I do have boundaries. Yes. And, like, and I'm, I want to be respectful of those. Yes. 
it's far better to say, here's my boundaries and then give a hundred percent than to like give 50% all the time. You know, give a hundred percent for three hours, give a hundred percent for eight hours versus let me give 25% for 24 seven all week long. It just doesn't work. Yeah. And that just like reminds me of the idea and you gave me this book of being an impact player. Yes. Right. Liz Wiseman and like the impact impact players don't have the mindset of being available 24 seven, but they are available when it matters or they, they play where it contributes the most value, right? Not answering little emails, but where can I contribute the most where I can make the biggest impact? Where can I give my hundred percent versus 50% all the time? Yeah. Yeah. So in some, don't, some. don't be available 24 seven, set boundaries. When mm-hmm. you set boundaries, you actually get more done and you're happier at the yeah. end of the day. Okay, true. We have boundaries. <laughs> we have some boundaries. You don't have 24 seven uh, to answer these uh, trivial no. questions today. Also, is there a boundary on the minimum of how many questions I can get right? Uh, no, but I am going to tell you right now that these are kind of tough. Has, has, have they ever been easy? I mean, maybe. (laughs) Depends on who you're asking. Your trivia questions have always been so hard. But they're fun. They are fun. They are fun. Okay, so these all have to do with, like, time, being available. Okay. Boundaries. Okay. Um, so you have 30 seconds, okay. five questions. Okay. First question. How fast did Usain Bolt run the 100-yard dash? Oh, my God. 24 seconds. No. Time is called the what dimension? The fourth dimension. Yes. How many time zones does China have? Oh, my God. Five. No. What is the device used that keeps track of time by the position of the sun? Um, a uh, 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 sun clock. No. And last one. Who proposed the idea of daylight savings time? Uh, shoot. I don't know. Oh. You tried. I tried. You tried. <laughs> <laughs> you tried, Tree. Mm. Um, you got one right. Time is the fourth dimension. Time is the fourth dimension. What are the other three? Well, um. Space. Well, no, no. It's length. It's like it's length, width, height. height. No, that's it. That sounds weird. I didn't even. I I knew it's. The, I knew time has been called the fourth dimension, but I don't know what the other three are. Yeah, like volume. I don't know. We might be totally wrong with that. We could be. Um. Okay. How much time did it take Usain Bolt to run? The 100-yard dash, he did it in 9.58 seconds. Oh. Tree, I think you could run it in 24 <laughs> seconds, okay? <laughs> you are not world record pace here. He did it in 9.58 seconds, which Good is pretty darn fast. Yeah. Um, how many time zones does China have? One. Mm. I know. They're like this big, it's massive big. country. Yeah. But they just uh, they just go by Beijing. They just basically said that that's the, like, that's the place where everybody has to be on the same time. Yeah. But it's at, like, it's actually, they say there's really probably about a three and a half hour time difference from one side to the other. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the device that's used to keep track of time by the position of the sun is called a sundial. A sundial. Okay. A sundial. I knew that. I just didn't have the word. Yeah. A sundial. And then um, the last one, who proposed the idea of daylight savings? It was Benjamin Franklin. Hmm. And I heard okay. they're getting rid of that. I think that's going to stop being a thing. And I'm okay with it. I don't like having to set the clock back, move the clock forward. So people would love it when they don't have to wake up early. But they will hate it when they lose their one extra hour of sleep. Yeah, the fallback is nice to spring forward, not so much. Yeah. So in whether you got one right, none right, or all of them right... <laughs> Remember, don't be available 24-7. Set boundaries. You'll be happier and you'll get more done. Yeah. So right after you watch this episode, like think about what is the best use of this moment. Is it answering that email? Is it going back to work? Or is it doing something that makes you feel 
satisfied and fulfilling in your life, like spending time with your family. And then do that. And do that. See you later. Bye.